is Oncology Podcasting. I'm your host, Ellen Baker. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration today approved a test that determines the likelihood of breast cancer returning within five to 10 years after the initial cancer in women. The mammoprint test uses a microarray analysis, a powerful test for studying the patterns of behavior of large numbers of genes. Breast cancer recurrence is partly dependent on the activation and suppression of certain genes located in the tumor. Mammoprint can measure the activity of these genes and help physicians determine the odds of cancer spreading. Mammoprint was developed by a company called Agendia. The company is located in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Agendia was able to identify a set of 70 genes that provide information about the likelihood of tumor recurrence. Mammoprint test measures the level of activity of these genes and, using a specific formula, produces a score that determines the risk of cancer spreading to other sites. Agendia analyzed the data from the tumor samples and clinical information from 302 patients at five European centers. The data confirmed that Mammoprint test was able to predict time to recurrence in women who are under age 61 and who are in stages 1 and 2 and who have a tumor size equal to or less than 5 cm with no evidence of spread to the surrounding lymph nodes. Mammoprint prognostic test is the first in vitro diagnostic multivariate index assay, also known as DMIA, a device to be approved by the FDA. According to the American Cancer Society, an estimated 178,480 new cases of invasive breast cancer will be diagnosed, and 40,000 women are expected to die from the disease this year. A study in New Journal of Medicine reported that a woman who has a very dense breast on the mammogram has a higher risk of developing breast cancer than a woman whose breast is not as dense. The breast density seen on a mammogram is due to presence of fibrous tissue in the breast, and it usually appears radiodense or white on a mammogram. A fatty tissue in the breast is radiolucent or dark on a mammogram. The study performed by a group of investigators from Canada showed that the odds of detecting breast cancer in women with 75% or more of their breast dents on mammogram was three and a half times higher than a woman who had a breast density less than 10%. Even in those women whose cancer was not detected at the time of screening the mammogram, the risk of developing breast cancer within a year was 17.8 times higher if their breast had a density of 75%. The odds of developing breast cancer was 5.7% after 12 months or more. This increased risk of breast cancer persisted for at least eight years and was greater in younger than in older women. At the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium held in December, researchers reported that the rates of the most common breast cancer dropped 15% from August 2002 to December 2003. They believe that the drop occurred because millions of women stopped taking the hormone that was given for the symptoms of menopause. The findings were supported by a separate study in California that reported a drop in the rates of breast cancer and a correspondingly bigger drop in hormone use starting in July 2002. In July 2002, the Women's Health Initiative found that women taking the hormone PEMPRO had slightly higher breast rates. Since then, the use of the hormone dropped. The hormone PEMPRO was used to relieve symptoms of menopause, such as hot flashes. The hormone was also thought to protect against heart disease and osteoporosis. And until July 2002, as many as one-third of American women over age 50 were taking the pills. Most breast cancer is fueled by estrogen, and studies have found that removing estrogen reduces the rate of cancer. Let's hear what women think of the hormone and breast cancer. And he said this, he said I could wear, you know, the rest of my life. And I, you know, he said he went to John Hopkins and, you know, they had a study on that. So uh, when he came back, that's, he called me in and he told me that, knowing me that I had breast, breast cancer. And um, 
And then he kept me on that. And I questioned him about it. And he seemed to think everything was okay. You know, by taking the patch. But if it's not, I will go off. Okay. So far I've been without the estrogen for about two and a half months now, almost three. And I like being without it. It makes me feel better. I feel like I'm safer with that. It may be, uh, it, I won't have breast cancer. And I think that's one of our biggest fears is for ladies to have breast cancer nowadays. And I'm glad to see that they are doing studies on this, letting us know that this can cause cancer. And now that we're, we know that, we know we have our, our differences, whether we want to take it and we have an option to take it or not to take it. And my option was to stop it, which I did. Thanks for listening. For Oncology Podcasting, this is Ellen Baker.